you guys. So you might be presented with a situation where you're given the annual reducing balance depreciation rate, but you wish to calculate, say, the monthly or the quarterly um, reducing balance depreciation rate. You can't just divide your annual depreciation rate by 12 to get the monthly depreciation rate or divide it by 4 to get the quarterly depreciation rate. That will give you the wrong answer. Fortunately, there's a simple formula you can use in combination with Excel to easily calculate the correct depreciation rate that you need to apply when calculating the quarterly or monthly reducing balance depreciation. So to begin with, I'm going to do the simple yearly calculation, then we can cross-reference our quarterly and monthly calculations to our yearly figures. So to begin with, we've got an initial asset value of £100,000 and the depreciation rate is 20%. So the opening balance will equal our initial asset value, which is 100000 Our depreciation will equal... 100,000, which is our initial value, times by 20%. So that's the depreciation charge for year one, and the closing balance will equal our opening balance minus the depreciation for year one. So the carrying value at the end of year one is 80,000. So our opening balance in year two will equal the closing balance in year one. And we can just drag this formula down. Now we can just drag down the other two formulas, and this gives us the the depreciation calculations over a three-year period. Now, say we want to calculate the quarterly depreciation on a reducing balance basis. Well, we need to solve for a simple formula. So, how does that formula look like? Well, the formula will be the formula that we need to solve will be the initial asset value, which in this case is 100,000, that times 1 minus x, which is the depreciation factor which we need to try and um, solve for, whole thing to the power, because there are four quarters in a year, it'll be to the power of 4, that needs to equal the um, closing balance at the end of year one, which is 80,000. So what this formula is essentially doing is that at the end of the fourth quarter, i.e. at the end of year one, the carrying value needs to be 80,000. So what depreciation factor X will give us this um, closing value at the end of four quarters? So in solving for X, we get X will equal one minus Uh, 1 minus 80,000 divided by 100,000, which gives us 0 0.8. So it'll be 1 minus 0 0.8, whole thing to the power 1 divided by 4, which gives us 5.43%. So that's the depreciation, depreciation factor which we need to apply. So we can make this formula a lot more dynamic. So what you notice is that the 0 0.8 that we've got here, that is essentially one minus our depreciation rate. So we can link this 0 0.8, which gives us the carrying value at the end of each period. We can link it to here. And we can also, we notice that the number four here is essentially the number of quarters that we have in a year. So within our time factor we can enter in 4 and then we can link our formula to that um, input cell reference. So what this effectively means is that we can change our parameters here in accordance with whatever um, uh, whatever we want and that will update our depreciation factor. So once we've done that we can now calculate the quarterly depreciation rate. So we know in the first quarter, opening balance, 
will equal our initial asset value, which is 100,000. And our depreciation amount will equal 100,000 times our depreciation factor there. And the closing balance will equal our opening balance minus our depreciation rate. And then in quarter two, our opening balance will equal our closing balance. And now we can just drag down. So we know that over a three year period, there will be 12 quarters. So we want there to be 12 quarters in our table. The closing balance, well, let's get this formatted correctly. So we don't want there to be any decimal uh, places. So now we can just drag down our formula. And as you can see, at the end of the fourth quarter, which is, that, which is the same as being at the end of year one, we have a closing balance of 80,000, which equals the amount in our annual model. If we go to the end of quarter eight, which is the end of year two, we've got a closing balance of 64,000, and that equals our closing balance at the end of year two. And if we go to the end of quarter 12, which is equivalent to the end of year three, we've got a closing balance of 51,200, which is equal to our the close balance 51,200. So if we sum the depreciation in year one, which comprises the first four quarters, we get a total of 20,000, which is equal to the depreciation charge in year one as per our annual model. Likewise, if we check the next four quarters, which comprise year two, we've got, we've got an annual depreciation charge of 16,000, which is the same as our calculation in our annual model. And if we look at the the uh, next four quarters, which comprise quarter, uh, which comprise year three, we've got an annual depreciation charge of 12,800, which is the figure that we've got in our annual model. So now, say for instance, we want to calculate the monthly depreciation charge. All we have to do now is change, because there's, there's 12, um, 12 months in a year, we just change the time factor well, and that updates our model accordingly. So we've got at the end of 12 months, we can change quarter to period if we want to, sorry, to um, month. So at the end of month 12, we've got a closing balance of 80,000, which matches our figure in year one. So if we sum the depreciation in that year, we've got 20,000, which matches our figure here. So we can now just uh, drag down our formula to get, so we want, we're looking for 36 uh, months, which comprise three years. So we 34, 35, 36, so as you can see at the end. So from month 13 onwards to month, uh, month 13 to month 24, that comprises our next um, year, our second year. So if we sum if we sum the depreciation charge in that year, we've got 16,000, which again equals the figure on our annual model. And if we look at the next 12 months after that, which comprise year three, we've got total depreciation of 12,800, which equals the figure on our annual table. You can also change your depreciation rate and that will feed through into your depreciation factors. So say for instance, you want to charge it on a 10% basis, you just enter in 10, and your figure will update automatically um, to take that into consideration. So as you can see at the end of year one, the closing balance is 90,000, and we've got 90,000 there. At the end of year two, the closing balance is 81,000, and we've got 81,000 there. And at the end of year three, we've got a closing balance of 72,900, and there's 70,900 there on our table. So this is how you can very easily calculate, very flexibly calculate the annual, or you could even calculate a semi-annual depreciation rate. Um, so in order to do that, we know that it, when looking at a semi-annual time period, there's six months in a semi-annual period. So that means there's two lots of six months in a year. 
So the time factor will be two to represent the fact that there's two lots of six months in a year because it's semi-annual, half year. So if we change the time factor to two, and as you can see, we can change months to maybe semi-annual. Uh, so at the end of the end of year one, which is represented by period two, uh, we've got 90,000 as the closing balance, which matches our figure in our annual table. At the end of period four, which is the end of the second year, we've got 81,000, which again matches. And at the end of period six, we've got 72,900, which matches the figure in our annual table. So it's a very dynamic and flexible model, which you can use to calculate the reducing balance depreciation rate over different time periods.